Now, today we'll be talking about problems 10, 11, and 12 of the IMO NST sample paper 2, the senior version. So, here in problem 10, so they say with the same number of digits and then the operation, I don't know what, what is this called? A, B denotes the sum of products of the corresponding digits of A and B. So, this one. So, uh, I'll be writing it in, in a way which, which might seem strange, but uh, this, is not, this is how I did the problem. So, and when we say corresponding digits, so something like this, so one, so we would, we are to multiply these two and then multiply these two and so on and so forth. So one times five over here, we would get five and then two times six, we would get 12, three times seven, we would get 21, 21, and then four times eight, we would get 32. So yeah, add up and we get 70, something like that. So now what the problem, so what the problem here wants us to do is to, determine the value of this astronomical number but uh look over here so if we were to write it down like this so one two three 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 okay and then for the second number we'll have one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three and then so on and so forth so yeah, I'll be continuing the same operation as mine as well, so we'll just be multiplying. And then, you can observe that uh, the first number, the first astronomical number, has, uh, how do I say, three numbers per cycle, so one, two, three in a cycle, one, then later one, two, three in a cycle, and then for the second number, it will have one, two, three, four on repeat. So now, we, what do we need to do? Uh, we know that the uh, lowest common multiple of 3 and 4, I I hope that you know what the definition of lowest common multiple means, means that the smallest number in which it can be divided by here, in this case, 3 and 4. So it will be 12. So what this means that is that after 12, we'll just be doing things on repeat. So we'll just need to look at the first 12 because uh, after this, yeah, just re repetition. So now what we want to look at is that uh, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, what are those? So I'll be doing the I'll be doing the multiplications. You maybe you can just guess then then maybe check if you have got gotten right. I'm not really sure. So here are here they are. Okay, this is this is 12. Okay. So in a group of 12, in a group of 12 numbers like this one here. So we would have a sum of 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 4 plus 2 plus 6 plus 3 plus 8 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 plus 12. So this one might take some time, but uh, let me add it up together first. So this is 18, 20, 26, 29, 37, 40, 42, 48, and then 60. So in a group of 12, the, num the sum of the products of the corresponding digits would be 60. And then now we have... 2020 digits so how many cycles or how many like repetitions how many copies of 12 do we have here so 2020 i'll be using long division i know there's a there's an easier way but i'll be using this one so uh yeah we are 32 then 72 and then 100 100 minus 96 equals to 4 so we have we will have 168 copies of this 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, or 12 digits. And then we'll have a 4 extra leftovers, should I say. So the value of this operation would be 168 times 60, and then plus the first 4 numbers over here. Because, how do I say? Um, Because after this, after the, after the last 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, something like that, they will be the last four numbers in these 2020 digits so 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 4 is 18 so the sum would be 168 times 60 would be 10080 plus 18 equals to 10098 so here we go voila and now on to problems 11 and 12 so yeah this is quite a mouthful to say Okay, so now for problem 11, consider the following table and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, for, you can see that in problem 11, in, in the nth row are n numbers. 
So what is the number directly below 2020? And then uh, here I will be expecting that you already know the formula of 1 adding up until n because this will play an important role in our solving for in our solution for this problem. So yeah, you can see that in the second row, so I'll be writing what I thought of just now in the second row, for example, last number is um 2 times 3 divided by 2 is 3 and then in the maybe in the fifth row in the fifth row the last number would be 5 times 6 divided by 2 would be 15 and then uh why why do we say so because uh in the first row there's one number second row two numbers third row three numbers fourth row fourth numbers and so on and so forth so we'll be, we'll just be adding one plus two plus three plus four plus five and then plus six and then so and so on and so forth so uh to save me some space i'll be re uh erasing this first i'm assuming that all of you have catched up with what i'm saying just now so so the last number so the last last number of the nth row would be this one and then if we want to proceed to the next row so maybe the kth number so k must be smaller than number k must be smaller than n plus 1 so kth number of n plus 1 the the preceding row would be n times n plus 1 divided by 2 plus k so the condition would be k must be smaller than n plus 1. And then uh, to give an example, so maybe say 13. So 13 is the third number of the fifth row. So maybe 4 plus 1 row. So um, here we would have, uh, what we have here? Here we will have 13 equals, so we will have 4 times 5 divided by 2 plus 3 would be 13 no? here this is how we get our numbers so uh i don't think i would uh use much time on explaining why this is so maybe you can observe it i'm not really sure but now uh here now we are really doing the problems right now so uh let's estimate a number so maybe n times n plus 1 divided by 2 so it's somewhere around 2020 so what what will we be doing so maybe uh n square plus n should be around for 4040 something like that and then our estimates give us so maybe uh n n square plus n so the square and then should be 4040 zero, zero, something squared i'm not really sure but this is just taking the this is taking the whole number part so our n should be around 63 something like that okay so uh we are so using the fact that our n will be somewhere around 63 so when we put in 63 times 64 divided by 2 is actually 2016 which is surprisingly close to 2020 so the last number of the 63rd row would be 2016 no so uh again i will need to erase this to make some space for my problem solving okay so let's write our statement the last number of 63rd row is 2016 so fourth number of 64th row would be yeah, this is 63 plus 1. So we would have 2020. So voila. So now what we want to do is we want to find the fourth number. Fourth number of the 65th row. Because the fourth number of the 65th row is directly below of the 65th row. Would be directly below so because uh you can see that they all these numbers they lean to the left uh, they want to start from the leftmost so the fourth number of the 65th row would be um, 265 over 64 plus 1 so this one would be 64 times 65 plus so divided by 2 plus 4 this one would be 
2084. Okay, so this one is quite mouthful. I hope you guys have uh, understood what I have written just now. And now here I would be solving problem 12. So the regular, so the regular 20 sided polygon A B C D E F G H I J K L M N. So note here there's a there's no O here. P Q R S T U has center O and then find I M O N S T angle angles I M O and angles N S T in degrees. So here we have this one big 20. 20 sided polygon but i won't draw it very nicely because i don't i want to save time lah, to be honest so a b and then uh, i won't denote the next few points c d e f g h i so i is over here j k l m is over here and then this is n and p q r s then T, then U, okay? And our O is somewhere inside here. So, if we t we are talking about the center O, so from any point to the center O, they will this one will be something like the radius, okay? So, this one, these two will be of the same length, and then ditto for all of these. You get the gist of what I'm saying right now. So, if we were to talk about uh, angles I, M, O, so this one will be this one. So this angle and then N S T will be which one is it? N S T will be something like this. So now I will need the help of auxiliary lines to help me understand better how do I solve this problem. So my auxiliary lines will be all of these points. So I M N S T are all link I'll link all of them to O because well we'll get a bunch of isosceles triangles. Okay. So I to O, it's not really pretty, ah. Uh. Yeah, give me some time. All these harder problems actually need more time to explain, uh, so I'm just trying to reduce the time limit. Okay, so now, uh, we okay. So maybe I would call these two maybe say B and C. So the angle between them. So this B C I would call them as I don't know maybe say a spoke. I don't know if this is the right term for this one. So for any two consecutive spokes, the angle between them, because this is a 20-sided polygon and then a whole circle, a whole circle is 360 degrees, divided by 20, because we have 20 spokes, it will have a value of 18. So this one would be 18 degrees, okay? So now, if we want to find the angle for angle IMO, so what we will need to do is we will need to find the value of angle IOM. So this is O, I'll write over here again. So how many spokes are there? So I J J K K L I J J K K L and L M. So we have four spokes over here. So 18. So this one would be 18 times 4 will be 72 degrees. So this is 72. And then this this is an isosceles triangle. So I'll bring it out over here. So and I saw this triangle and then we have 72 degrees. So we have our angle IMO over here. So this would be, so our angle IMO would be 180 degrees, which is the angle sum of triangle minus 72 degrees divided by two because this is isosceles would be 54 degrees. So this is 54. And then this angle NST is actually a sum of the, how do I say, sum of the angles of two triangles and then now we need to see how many spokes are there between n and s first because we this is a individual triangle in this context so n p p q r so wait give me some time out n p p q q r r s i think i need right now p q r s so we also have four spokes over here, so this one is also 72, and then this one also be 54. But, ST, ST, so angle SOT, because this is, this is a one spoke, so this one will be 18 degrees. So we will draw another isosceles triangle over here, so we have 18 degrees here, so we have um, SOT, so the angle of angle OST so so angle OST would have at 
and a value of 180 degrees minus 18 and then divided by 2 will be 81 i hope you guys are following up so this is 81 so this angle nst is actually so angle and oh my god angle nst is actually equal to angle uh angle osn plus angle ost is equal to 54 plus 81 will be 135 so our answer so our answer would be nst is 135 degrees and then our imo is 154 degrees so the sum would be 54 plus 135 is 189 so the answer to problem 12 is 189 degrees okay so very good uh yeah this is quite a mouthful so in the next videos i'll be making two questions per video so stay tuned for tomorrow's and adios